Hey everyone, it's Camille. Today I am super excited to be shooting another plant related video for you guys. As a plant lover, I have a lot of plants. I do know a lot about plants, but I never claim to be an expert on plants because of how much I am always learning. On a lot of my other plant videos, I get comments with people's tips and tricks, and even a lot of the times people are telling me blatantly things that I'm doing wrong, and I actually really appreciate those types of things because as a plant lover, I'm always open to learn new things from fellow plant lovers. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the top five mistakes that I think beginner plant owners are making. These mistakes are really common. They're definitely mistakes that I have made in the past, and it's really great to be able to identify them early and fix them so that none of your plants are dying because of these reasons. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to be talking about an instance where I actually killed the majority of my plants with just one mistake. So it's a huge plant horror story. You definitely don't want to miss it. But before we get into this video, make sure you like and subscribe and comment down below letting me know if you have any of your own plant horror stories or if you have any extra tips and tricks for me. And without further ado, let's get onto the video. I think that the number one houseplant mistake is issues with overwatering and underwatering. I think that beginner plant owners actually tend to overwater their plants a lot and it's leading to a lot of plant deaths. And the reason why I think this is because you get a new plant, you spent your money on it, it looks really cute in its pot, you're really determined to keep it alive and it's doing really great for the first couple weeks and then it starts to show some signs that it's not doing so great. And I think a lot of people freak out at that point and they just assume that what their plant needs is more water. So they start to water it more frequently and then they're just overwatering it and leading to their plant to eventually die. I think there are definitely people that are underwatering their plants, maybe people that are really busy and they just can't keep up with, you know, remembering when the last time they watered their plants was. Some of the signs that you are overwatering your plants are things like the tips of your leaves turning brown or there are some yellow spots in your leaves and then also the leaves are brown but they're not necessarily like crunchy they're kind of like wilted and a little bit soggy um, a lot of times plants leaves will kind of start to retain a lot of water if they're being overwatered. so they will start to sag and they'll actually look a little bit like soggy and just gross and that's how you can tell that your plant is being overwatered. Sometimes that you are underwatering your plant is if the soil is super, super dry and you can just tell that you haven't watered it in a long time and you can't remember the last time you watered it. And then also the leaves are probably also going to turn brown, but they're going to be like a crispy brown and they're probably going to fall off right away. So overwatered is like still brown, yellow, wilty but kind of soggy and then the underwatered would be like brown crispy leaves usually what i do when i get a new plant is i look up the care for it and i learn a lot about it and i just learn about how much water it really wants to get so with some of my cactuses and my succulents they don't like a lot of water so i'm letting them dry out completely in between waterings so that means that basically from top to bottom their soil is dry um, and then there are some other plants like ferns and things that like a lot more humidity. They like to be watered a lot more and you don't want to over sog their soil. So you're probably not watering them every day, but you're just always kind of making sure that their soil isn't drying out. It's just kind of remaining a little bit moist all the time. Um, and then there's some of my other plants like my snake plant, my fiddle leaf fig, my monstera. I'm not letting them dry out completely from top to bottom before I water them, but I'm letting them dry out about um, two inches on the top before I water them again. So I stick my finger in and if it goes to like my second or third knuckle and it's still pretty dry, then I'll go ahead and water it. If I'm feeling some dampness, I'll just wait a couple days. And with the majority of my plants, it's usually about a week and a half um, in between waterings that I'm feeling that right dampness in the two inches of soil. The number two plant mistake that I think people are making is choosing a planter with no drainage and directly planting their pot into it. So here is an example of a little planter pot. Super cute, just really simple. It's a terracotta pot, maybe not the fanciest one, but this is a great one because it has 
this drainage hole in the bottom. And so this would be a great candidate to actually take your plant out of its little nursery pot that you bought it in, put some soil in, and fully plant it directly into this pot. Um, a lot of people, what I think they do is they find these super cute pots that they get at a garden store or a home decor store and they plant them directly into them when they don't have a drainage hole. So what happens when you do that is the plant isn't being able to fully dry out in between waterings and it's just getting really soggy and there's a really um, high chance that you'll end up over watering or causing root rot for your plant. So here is my ZZ plant and it's in this super cute pot that I got from Anthropology. I could not pass it up. I still wanted it even though it did not have a drainage hole. So you can see at the bottom, it's just a solid bottom. So what I do with these types of pots is instead of putting soil in, taking my pot out of its nursery pot and putting it in here, fully planting it, what I do is I keep them in their nursery pot and then I put them into the planter pot and just display them like this. And then when I water them, I'm taking them out, watering them, let the, letting them dry off a little bit and then putting them back into their planter pot and back on the shelf. The number three plant mistake that I'm going to be talking about is watering your plants incorrectly. So this is really common with things like succulents. I see a lot of things telling you to just like spritz your succulents or just spray them with um, a little water bottle. Um, I don't think that this is great for succulents. I haven't had a lot of um, success with this because succulents, it is true that they don't need a lot of water but they still do need water and their roots definitely do need to be getting water. Um, their roots suck out the water from the soil and bring it up to the leaves. And so when you're just spritzing them, um, they're really not, the water's not penetrating down into the roots and they'll just kind of end up um, drying out and dying. So especially with succulents, what I do is I don't water them very often. I make sure that their soil is drying out completely but I'm not letting it dry out completely and then waiting weeks to water them. I'm letting them dry out completely and then I'm watering them and I'm letting the water go all the way through the pot, making sure that the soil is getting so soaked in all areas and then putting them back in their spot where they're getting a lot of sun so that they're able to dry out again. Um, and then I repeat that process. With some of my regular houseplants, I'm definitely watering them more than my succulents and my cactuses, but I'm watering them in the same way. And that just means that I'm putting them under the water and making sure that the water is soaking all of the soil evenly and then eventually draining out the bottom holes. I think a lot of people are putting like one cup or a half cup, depending on how big their plant is. And so there's just like one soggy spot of their plant that they watered, but then all the edges and all the other areas of the plant are remaining really dry. Um, and so you don't wanna do this, you wanna make sure that the soil is all evenly soaked um, and this will create a really happy and healthy plant. So a lot of times what I do with some of my bigger plants, I know some people will put them into their bathtub, but some of my plants are really big and I don't like to move them all the way to my bathtub. So I have this little like container that I just got at Target. And what I do is I'll like take them out of their planter pot or I'll just place their planter pot into this little tray and then I'll water them in there. And then as soon as I see all the drainage coming out into this little container, then I will stop watering them and I'll just make sure that I can see that, you know, all the soil is soaked evenly. And then I'll leave them in this for a couple hours just to kind of dry out a little bit. And then I'll put them back into their spot. So if you water these correctly, um, I really think that your plants will be super happy and healthy. The number four plant mistake is not recognizing and treating common plant problems correctly. So some of the biggest plant problems are things like bugs and then also root rot. So with bugs, um, some of the common types of bugs are things like fungus gnats. So fungus gnats, they look like little fruit flies, but they'll be living on top of your plant soil. And when you water your plant, you'll see them kind of fly up or they might just be kind of flying around all the time. Um, these are super common, especially when you have a lot of plants, you might not know exactly which one it's coming from. Um, 
Sometimes what you can do is you might be overwatering one of your plants and so the soil is just really wet and they're just really living in that wet soil and that's what they like. Um, and then also what you can do is you can just kind of maybe stop watering that plant as much so that its soil isn't as soggy and then those flies will usually die because they really thrive in that soggy soil. Or um, you can do things like putting charcoal on the top of your plant. Um, this makes it so that there isn't that soggy surface for the plants to live in. But then when you water it, it's um, kind of porous enough for the water to get down into the roots of your soil, but then the charcoal's covering the whole top of your plant so they can't live in it. Um, that's something that I've actually done in the past that has worked really well. Um, and then there's another thing called mealybugs that are really popular in house plants as well. What I usually do um, when I buy a plant is I check it for mealybugs because it's really common for you to buy a plant from maybe a garden center or Home Depot or Lowe's and you don't notice that it has mealybugs and then they can actually spread and cause problems in all of your other plants. So to keep your plants safe, make sure you're inspecting them before you buy them. I did recently buy this ZZ plant, again, that um, I talked about before. And what happened is I did notice after a while that it did have mealybugs. Um, I got really worried and kind of freaked out because it was kind of near a lot of my other plants. But I inspected all my other plants, kept an eye on them. I didn't see any mealybugs on um, my other plants. Mealybugs look like little white, almost like powdery little spider kind of things. I'll put a picture um, so you guys can kind of see. But what I did, I was super happy that it didn't spread to any of my other plants. But I just actually cleaned the leaves really good. And then I cleaned all the leaves and the mealybugs off with some hydrogen peroxide. And then I actually diluted the hydrogen peroxide and I put it in some water and then I watered the soil also with the hydrogen peroxide and that got rid of them the first time. I know a lot of people will have issues with them coming back or maybe um, it not doing the trick the first time, but I did have a lot of success with that. Um, mealybugs can be really bad because they actually do kind of pierce into your leaves and suck out a lot of the moisture. So if you have a plant that has mealybugs that has gone untreated for a long time, it will start to wilt and the leaves will start to go yellow and it just won't do great. And the biggest problem is when they start spreading and then you just have this huge problem that is just impossible to control. So like I said, make sure you're inspecting your plants so that you can kind of avoid those issues in the future. The other common problem that I think people are having a hard time identifying and then actually treating correctly is root rot. So root rot is definitely a consequence of overwatering. So you'll see some of those same signs of overwatering where maybe the leaves are turning yellow and brown and they're wilting, but at the same time they look really soggy. Um, your soil's really soggy. Maybe you have those fungus gnats. Um, those are some of the signs of root rot and it's just kind of going downhill really fast. Um, and what happens is the roots of your plant are actually getting way too soggy. They're not able to get any oxygen, so they just start to maybe grow fungus and they start to decay. So if you suspect that your plant actually has root rot, it's better to just treat it like it's root rot right away um, and just get it taken care of. So what you wanna do is take your plant out of its pot and then kind of massage all of the dirt out of its roots and then wash the roots really thoroughly. If your plant actually does have root rot, then you'll kind of see how the roots are getting really soggy and they'll just be kind of falling apart. So you'll want to take some clean scissors and cut off all of the really soggy affected parts of the root and then wash them really thoroughly again. And then if you suspect that the root rot is also kind of fungus related, um, maybe you have those fungus gnats, um, things like that, you can also use like some fungicide on the roots and that could help. And then before you repot your plant, you'll want to make sure to wash the pot really good. So you can use like bleach um, or another cleaner to really make sure that you're getting all of that root rot and that fungus out of the pot 
And then you'll want to plant it in some brand new soil um, into that really clean pot with its wash roots and it should do pretty good from there. So this is a really common plant problem because of how many people are overwatering their plants and I just think people um, don't recognize it and then in return they also don't treat it correctly if they do recognize it and it can just cause a lot of really bad problems. The number five plant mistake that I think people are making is treating their plant inconsistently. So this might be with water or it might be with moving your plant around a lot. With watering, um, there are some people that might be watering their plant like every day for the first week and then they're not watering it for like two weeks and then they come back and they water it, you know, every day for a week because they realize that they neglected it. Um, really plants thrive on consistency. So that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have like a day that you water all your plants because that just might not be what they need. Um, it just means that, you know, you're kind of keeping an eye on them. You're making sure that you're putting your finger in their soil. Um, they're drying out on the top layer and then you're watering them the same way correctly every time and they just kind of know what to expect. Um, and then another thing that I think a lot of plants struggle with is kind of being moved around a lot. Some people will be like, oh, maybe this isn't the right spot for it. So they'll just keep moving it around to all different spots in their house. And this can be bad for plants just because they do like to kind of adapt to their spot and just kind of learn how much light they're gonna get, really what they can expect. And then they'll really start to thrive from there once they get used to their spot. One plant that I know really struggles with being moved around and it's a really popular plant is the fiddle leaf fig. Um, one mistake that a lot of people make is they kind of freak out that maybe their fiddle leaf fig is in the right spot. And so they, like I said, just keep moving it around their house and it's never getting used to um, an actual spot and it's never really um, thriving in that one actual spot. So what I do when I get a fiddle leaf fig is you know, I choose a spot that I think it's going to do pretty well in based on its light requirements and stuff like that, but then I just keep it there. And it's pretty common that maybe when you get a new house plant, it might lose a couple leaves the first couple weeks just because it's getting used to its surroundings and really learning what it should expect from here on out. So I just try not to freak out if it's losing some leaves and I just wait it out, let it get used to its spot, and then it usually starts to really thrive from there. So yeah, that would be my tip with that is just to pick a spot that your plant is in and then just leave it there and then also treat it consistently with its watering and um, all the other stuff like that. Now on to my plant horror story. So the reason why I say anybody can become a successful plant owner is because I am a recovering literal plant serial killer and there's an instance where I killed most of my house plants with just one mistake and the one mistake is on this common mistakes list that I talked about and it was not treating root rot correctly and not treating it as seriously as it is so what happened is when I first got married we got this beautiful neon pothos and we hung it up in our kitchen this was about four years ago it was super beautiful, it was growing, it was doing great, and so I got a little confident and I was like, okay, maybe we can keep plants alive. So I bought a bunch of other plants like over the next couple months, and I had like a pretty large snake plant like this. I had a medium-sized monstera, a smaller fiddly fig, and then I had just a bunch of like kind of medium-sized plants. And what happened is they were doing fine. I, I thought I was doing great with my plant ownership, feeling pretty confident. And then my snake plant started looking a little sad. So what was happening is the leaves started turning a little bit yellow or discolored. They started getting brown tips on their leaves, but the brown tips weren't crispy or anything. They were actually pretty soggy. And then once the leaves were getting soggy, they were just starting to droop down because of all the water content in the leaves and I just I didn't really know what to think for a while I was like okay maybe I am over watering it so I think I started watering it a little bit less and I would just kind of start to cut off the like affected leaves and then like pretty soon I only had like three or four or five 
little sad snake plant leaves that were also like about to die. So um, I didn't really recognize that my plant had root rot, which it definitely did. And then I didn't treat it seriously. Um, and what I ended up doing is I put all of my plants in the bathtub and this is what I would do um, to kind of water my plants is I would put them all in the bathtub together and I put the snake plant like at the top of my bathtub and then like all of my other plants were kind of in the bathtub but they were all together and I watered the snake plant and then all of the water from the snake plant just kind of went and like touched all of the other plants and I was doing this like over and over for a couple weeks I was just like putting them in and watering them all together and root rot is actually very contagious and so what it actually did when I was doing that and watering them all together and having the bathtub filled with this infected water um, from my snake plant, it infected all of my other plants and very slowly <laughs> all my plants just died. And it was because I didn't recognize that my plant had root rot and I didn't treat it correctly or seriously. So learn from my mistakes. If your plants are showing signs of root rot, definitely isolate that plant and really take care of it on its own. Don't let it get any of your other plants infected because it can be devastating. I just kind of learned from it and I was like, okay, yeah, my plant had root rot and it infected all my other plants and they all died. I understand that now. And then I kind of moved on from that and learned from it and just kept trying. And I think that that's just kind of the most important thing is to just keep trying, keep learning, and that will lead to you being a successful plant owner later on down the road. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning more about these top five common plant mistakes. I truly believe that if you correct these issues and you start treating your plants correctly, then you will really become a successful plant owner. So before you leave this video, make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below letting me know if you're making any of these mistakes and what you plan to do to correct them. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. Bye.